Hey, everybody. It's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and uh, my, my buddy, Pastor Matt Richard, is back. How you doing? It's good to see you, Harrison. Doing well. Good. Good to see you too. We are uh, we're, we're hopping right in the middle of Advent as we record this. Um, and uh, you told me before we got started, you got you got two funerals this week on top of Advent, on top of every other thing going on. Um, but then Advent is just I, I really love it because it is simultaneously um, a, a call to just slow down and breathe, but also a, a reckoning with all of the things that are needing to come to an end. Uh, there's this church word that that comes up. Um, it, it's an evening hymn, and we've got evening services, Abide With Me. Um, and a lot of the Old Testament readings, too, where Jesus still speaks, kind of talk about this mentality. What is what is it to abide in the church? Um, especially, like, we, we can sort of imagine this sort of perfect little life where nothing ever happens, and we just go to church every Sunday, and we're not really sinners. But what is it really like to abide? <laughs> well, you know... Uh... <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe uh, crassly stated as as a dad. Okay, so now my kids are much older. I got sixteen, fourteen, and eight. But I remember, uh, you know, <laughs> when the kids were little. And I'm sure you've had this experience too, and all dads and parents have had this. Board and I, and and I'm sure all of us can remember a time when we were children and we heard this as well. And that would be basically this for the dad. You know, stay put. You know, don't mm-hmm. move off that chair. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're not leaving that chair until you eat your peas, right? You know, right. and 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 uh, just stay there. We had funny, funny story down just a little bit off off the uh, a little tangent here. I, the, the the kids would always have a tough time when they're little reaching the the, the counter. So I mm. took my book of Concord would always be somebody on the table, so they would sit on the book of Concord. So it was always uh, where's the where's the book of Concord? They would call it. And <laughs> so I put the book of Concord there, and I'd say, stay put, don't move. And that's that's abiding. And Jesus tells us uh, over and over and over, we hear this in the Gospels, to abide in him, uh, to stay put. And in fact, you know, with the um, uh, upcoming uh, Old Testament reading here, uh, there's this language uh, that's that's talking about Elijah. And it's also uh, tied to the Gospel lesson, which is about John the Baptist. And I think it's just, it's, it's absolutely just mind blowing that that John the Baptist he's calling people out to repent and he's calling them out to the Jordan River where they first entered the promised land and then here you got Elijah right and, and talking about Elijah in the book of Malachi and you think about the ministry of Elijah uh, he was calling the uh, uh, progressive uh, kind of crazy youth of the day uh, to get back to their parents now it's not. You know, get back to that generation. It's, it's 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 not it's not like a generational warfare, but it's getting back to um, what is important. Get back to where you belong. And so it's it's again it's it's I'm not I'm not trying to be my kids say I'm a curmudgeon and, and I'm mm. trying to be aspiring to be a curmudgeon, but uh, it is not that my generation, our generation is right and their generation is wrong. It's not even that the generation before us. It's it's not the generation. It's abiding in Christ, abiding in His gifts. Uh, returning to what he has given us. And so this idea of abiding and returning and remaining and staying put, uh, it, it can be a word of law when we when we are estranged and we go down the wrong path, but also at the same time, it's comforting uh, to stay put with Christ, uh, to stay in his holy ark of the church, uh, to remain steadfast. You know, you, you say it's curmudgeon, um, but like I, I think back um, and, and, you know, everybody sort of has a, a thing that they were deeply committed to when they are teenagers and, and, and young adults. Like I was I was all punk rock and um, it, it was one of my favorite things is, is there's great desire to change the world, to, to make it to make it less dark, to make it less awful, um, or, or at least to sort of help people along the way in, in it. A, a lot of the curmudgeon sort of comes up as you start to realize that it doesn't get fixed the way that you want to. Like you, you take all of your efforts to make the world better. And that's a good thing. Like that, that should be encouraged. We are to love our neighbor and it should look like something, but this, this place to come back to, to, to sort of not just lick our wounds when, when it doesn't get better, but, but when we realize there are things that are too big for us to fix, there's an abide as a comfort there. Um, go out there and try and fix the world. But you know, your, your father's your grandparents, they tried it too. And, and every time we've made, we've made some progress. We've, we've learned some things along the way, but when things get too big for you, there's always a safe place here. And, and it's the safe place of your father's and your grandparents too. Yeah. You know, I, I think of uh, the gospel of Matthew, I think it's chapter 17, 18, I think it's probably 18, uh, where Jesus says, unless you are changed and become like a little child, 
And uh, you're like, what? You know, now, 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 if we think about it from this perspective, you know, if if I were to say to you, you know, my, my son is 16, and he's going to love the fact that I'm talking about him on YouTube. But uh, <laughs> if my son, Matthias, if all of a sudden I were to tell you, you know, he's he's 30 years old, he's 60 now, but if I fast forward 15 years from now, and I tell you, he's still living in our basement, you know, wearing Star Wars pajamas and playing Xbox. And, you know, he comes up and he has Lucky Charm stains on his face. You say, okay, he's failed. <laughs> he's failed to failed to launch, right? He's failed to grow up. And, and we'd say there's something wrong. He needs to get a kick mm. in the rear, right? Right, right. Um, okay. And so this whole idea for us as we grow up, and I'm, I'm actually borrowing from uh, this, this professor named John Kleinig. He talks all about this, mm. about how in life we want to mature from dependence to independence. We want to be uh, uh, kicking uh, our youth out of the house to go and engage in life. Uh, we want our little ones to learn how to brush their teeth and put their shoes on. And we're always trying to mature people. However, in the church is different. Jesus says what? Don't grow up. Don't become independent. Uh, yeah. Abide in me. Go back to being a child. And what does a child do? A child puts his hands, uh, his his hand, his or her hand in daddy's hand. The child climbs in the lap of the parent and lays his head down and uh, says, speak to me and tell me it's going to be okay. And there's something so comforting about that. Um, you know, I, I still have these memories of being able to go to my father and, uh, you know, lay in his arms and, you know, he gives me a hug. It's going to be okay, son. You know, he's in his voice, deep voice. It'll be okay. It'll look better in the morning. And, and mm. even if it wasn't, it just was comforting to have him above me. And so to abide is to what? Find our hope and our assurance in Christ, who is Lord of all, bigger than us, uh, who's at the right hand of the Father, to abide in his holy ark of the church, uh, to have that assurance, uh, to stay put. Uh, because it, yeah, it does. When we get out on our own, independent, um, we 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 get our get our rear kicked. We we, we fall apart. Um, we get bruised up. And so, uh, Christ has never intended uh, for us to uh, depart from Him as an independent. Let's just say it this way: an independent branch on our own. We're always mm-hmm. to be connected to Him as the vine. Yeah, I've never really connected abide with with dependence before, but that's that's a really really great connection because like I mean it's the stay put. Um, when when you tell your kids to stay put, it's because you're going to do something for them. Like that's yeah, that's literally yeah. the, you can't go do it now. You have to stay in this seat. I've got it. Yeah. Well, it's kind of it's kind of like what you know when 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 you tell the kids. Uh, and I remember this as a kid too. It's like close your eyes and hold out your hands, and then you close your eyes and your hands go, and you just get so giddy and you want to move, and it's like don't mm-hmm. move, stay put. <laughs> because there's a gift for you. Uh, but what happens, we get so excited with our eyes closed. We want to peek. We want to open open our eyes and we want to run towards whatever it is. But with the Lord, it's what? Stay put. Stay in your spot. Abide in me as I mm-hmm. give you these good gifts, as I pronounce the forgiveness of sins. And I mean, if you really think about it, as, as far as the church goes too, you know, to abide in his church, to abide in his divine services on Sunday, every Sunday, uh, we can come to his divine service on Sunday morning and we can walk in with all the bruises of life, all the failings of our sin, um, all of our burdened consciences. We can walk into that church, stand shoulder to shoulder with our brothers and sisters in the church and say, I, a poor, miserable sinner. We basically mm-hmm. say, hey, we all messed it up this week. And then we hear the gospel, you know, in the stead of by the command of Lord Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. And, uh, you know, as the pastor places his hand on the font to be reminded that we're baptized uh, where we belong, with God's name written upon us, uh, with the full assurance. And then we get invited to the Lord's Supper uh, to abide right there in his presence, to be served with his body and blood. Uh, so it's great, yeah, to abide, to stay put so that you may be mm-hmm. given good gifts. It, it, it matters because, I, I mean, especially when you start to root it that way, um, it, it's a connection point. Um to see over and over again, generations sort of complaining, the young kids don't come to church, the young kids don't understand it. Um, it it's, it's God who simply creates a place for them to take their sins, their failures, um, and, and the things that, that they have, have wanted to be um, that, that didn't fit, that, that didn't work. Uh, when, when the Lord says abide, like you can find it as a command, uh, like, like time out, sit on the stoop or else. But, but really it, it, it is a, a safe place that is held long before you came into this world and will hold until the very end. Um, it, it's, it's also then for the grownups listening, maybe a, a chance to reckon like if, if, if your kid right now is in a place where all they see is, is potential in the world, um, 
that's good. That, that, that's not something to be dashed to pieces, but, but rather it, it's to sort of remind if things ever don't go as great as you dream and imagine and daydream and, and plan, there is this place for you. If in all of your your uh, desire to to walk in God's law, you happen to wake up the next day and have failed and been, there's a place for you. Um, to to make it a gift instead of a burden, this this word abide is is a wonderful thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm, and again, that imagery we we talked about too in our baptismal liturgy uh, to remain in the holy ark of the Christian Church, and uh, we think of Noah's ark, right? And you know, for those doors to be shut. Now, obviously, when those doors were shut on that ark, it, it kept some out, but it also sealed them in. And for us to be sealed into the ark of the church by our baptisms, by his holy word, that uh, as we look out, as bad as this world gets and as struggling as this world gets, that I have a place, a place to call home, a place to abide, a place to rest. And and I mean, this, this is this is another little little interesting little tidbit. But if you think about this, and we do this here at St. Paul's, we have these, uh, when people are baptized, we have our, our some of our precious ladies in our church, they actually knit together these white uh, blankets. And so then when it comes time for the baptism, we take these white blankets and we clothe it around the child, the baby. We wrap them in that to symbolize what the righteousness of Christ, uh, that, uh, that, they, that they are enveloped in this radiant righteousness of Jesus. The next time that they're going to be wrapped like that in front of the church is when funeral as we have a big white pole that wraps around the person that's died in Christ. And in fact, the uh, idea of this is that uh, the funeral, uh, we, like I said, we have a couple of funerals coming up. The funeral liturgy picks up right where the baptismal liturgy left off. Yeah, It's just great that we're baptized and held in Christ all the way into our death, death and even in and through death, we're held in Christ to abide with him. And so, yeah, Jesus says, stay put. And that's a good thing. Uh, because he wants to give us good gifts. He wants us to have assurance and certainty and hope. And so we say, God be praised for that. God be praised that we can abide and that that Amen. gracious invitation is for us. Amen. Pastor, thanks so much. Hey, it's good stuff. Good to see you, Harrison. You too. You too. Have a good one.